First thing you want to do is take these springs out. I got that one out. Get those out and in a good place so they don't go flying. On the back, hold the hammer. And I'm just going to show you this tool, these spring tools, these mechanics picks, you need a set of these to grab those springs with. Needle nose is okay, but this is. This is better. Um, there's not a matter of spring and whatnot. I'm not even going to be able to show getting that out of there, but it's right in there. I got this pad. I forgot how that spring went in there. Yeah, I was fretting about that, but I got it. You just got to pay attention to how how it comes apart. I just went. Need seals. I it would just dribble the BB out the barrel, so. I took it all apart, watched several YouTube videos, bought all kinds of picks and tools because what I could see was that seal was stuck down in the barrel, down in the gas chamber, air chamber, and the abutment seal was st obviously stuck in there too. When I pulled this apart, this is all I got. And I had quite a time getting that thing out of there. And I just wanted to do this quick clip because if anybody ever has this problem again, I used different size cleaning jags and tried to force that out of there. What I ended up doing, I took this bell hangers bit, quarter inch bell hangers bit, and I put a pair of vice grips on the end. And I ended up screwing that right down into that thing. And when I pulled out, I'll be damned if I didn't get the uh, the uh, main seal and the abutment washer all in one. And the whole time I was doing this, I'm like, how the, how the heck do I change the abutment washer in this? This isn't the same. You try and push a rod through. It's not the same as a Red Rider. You try and push a rod through from the muzzle end. It just goes right through the abutment washer and everything. There's a... this device here that's the magazine feed and there's a abutment there that the barrel backs up against and, and if, you, if you can't go through that if you can go through it you go right through the main seal or the abutment seal but um and if you can't go through it you can't go through it so anyway that's a good little trick i'll uh show you what it looked like when it came out anyway that's what it looked like when it came out I was yanking and pulling and all kinds of things, getting ready to go find some mechanic that had some long pair of forceps to grab what was left of that stem. But uh, it last night I've been all morning on this, from 5 to 6, 30, well, 7 o'clock now. But uh, we got it. So now we just got to wait for the new seal to get here, new set of seals. So I, I saw uh, my old buddy there, Rest the Mod, he's got a caulking gun arrangement he used, uses to compress this spring, but I just pulled down on it and got the pin in. Plunger, felt wiper, don't forget that washer. And now we'll go for the abutment seal down the barrel. I made a special tool for this out of an old piece of an air tube out of that Red Rider of my dad's. Um, Drilled it into a dowel. Now I'll oil it up in good shape and put the abutment seal on it. One thing I did was uh, tape this magazine follower open. 
just plastic. I don't want to damage it up in the uh, magazine feed. I got it. It went right down in. In spring already. New seat, new new uh, plunger seal on it. And I got my guide wire to take it through, and that's the main reason I tape that uh, magazine follower back. I don't want to damage that when I push that wire through there. That's going to guide the tip of that air tube into in through the abutment uh, seal and the abutment washer. Another tool I made. Um, this dowel, I cut some flat spots on it, and that is so that you can you need to make sure that that main plunger assembly is up and down perfectly. You can't have it sideways so that that uh, lever will catch that. Now we'll go for the main spring compressor tool and put the anchor in. There's two types of these tools. There's the Shane Bruce Restomod Daisy model, and it works really well. Just simply get it each dowel on either side of that main spring. Now you watch, you'll be able to see that spring compress. Yeah, that's by enough. I could put that anchor in right now. I'm going to let it back. And I want to show you this other tool that I saw. And I couldn't stand it. I had to make one. I mean, I'm an electrician by trade far out of practice but I made this tool too and this one you get it in there and you're gonna get those points out by with a punch or a screwdriver or something because right now it's just buttoned up against the, the uh, main plunger assembly so there's the main spring anchor and I pushed it in with this uh, tool I had it in there backwards first um, so there it is, and out comes the tool. One more little tidbit, I had to read, take that main plunger out again. You have to get that main plunger part way in, in order to get the lever in behind it, to get the lever back in. So I had to get that part way in and get the lever in behind the main plunger assembly and get all this linkage in, there's two pieces to this uh, mechanism. One there, and one there, and the pins go in. Remember the pins always go in, same as a Red Rider, pins go in on the left side of the gun. Um, that was another little trick. Now let's go for the hammer and trigger. Okay, so it's all back together. I'm gonna try it here. <laughs> a little nervous, but uh, we'll see what happens. So the way this loading gate works is it's just like an old Winchester. I just lay them in there and then let it trickle down. You could probably get two or three to a time once you get it figured out. Then this is the magazine follower. And that what that does is a piece of plastic, flexible plastic pushes the BB up into the chamber. If you get that down, you can see the BBs in there. And you see that stays back. Okay, so now we're going to try it through the chronograph and uh, see what we get out of it. A good BB gun's around 350 feet per second. That's real good. And a poor one's 165 or so. Let's try it. Error. 226. 228, 228, that's a dual because that, that means it's fired the same, same speed twice, 230, 228, 228. just pretty consistently 228 feet per second good enough I'm not gonna tear it all apart and try anything else with it <laughs>